Welcome to my couch. Shannon here from The Nourished Lifestyle. And today I want to talk about how much should I be eating in order to facilitate fat loss. Um, but it's going to be a little bit different a conversation. So I'm not going to talk about figuring out your overall calories and macronutrients. Rather, what I want to talk to you about is what can be happening in your body physiologically when you are choosing a different deficit amount from what your body requires in order to stay at maintenance. So newsflash, in case you haven't heard, you need to be in a deficit in order to lose weight. So all those people that say, um, you know, you need to eat only fats or only carbohydrates or only cabbage soup, I don't know, whatever it is, at the end of the day, it is a caloric deficit that is gonna help facilitate fat loss or weight loss in general. What I wanna to talk to you guys today about is how you can choose what kind of deficit to put yourself in in order to mitigate any sort of physiological changes so you know what you can think about that being is things like you know people who say oh I can't lose weight because of my thyroid or my hormones or this or that so that's kind of what I want to talk about so if we can all agree that you need to be in a deficit in order to lose weight we need to kind of know what a deficit looks like. So let's say, and there are lots of calculators out there that can help you figure out what your TDEE is. So that's the totally daily energy expenditure. Um, I'll put a link in the comments to help you um, navigate yourself to one. There's lots of different ones out there. Some will give you different numbers um, and things like that, but at the end of the day, what you need to figure out is you need to figure out how many calories your body needs in order to maintain your weight. So maintain kind of where you're at. And your TDEE is going to be based on lots of different things, like if you have a sedentary job or not, if you're fairly active, um, what your age is, your height, your weight, all of that sort of stuff is gonna go into what your body needs in order to just maintain your weight. So let's just assume that your daily calorie amount to maintain your weight is going to be 2400 calories let's just say so in order to be in a deficit 2200 calories would put you into a deficit right now what the nice thing is with the 2200 calorie deficit from 2400 is that most likely you're going to be able to adhere to that it's not going to feel too hard to take away 200 calories from your diet um, the other thing is, is that most likely it's also going to take longer for you, which, you know, could be a nice trade-off that you're going to go into a slight deficit. You're going to see slower rate of change, but most likely you're not going to see big um, rebounds uh, or ups and downs in your weight during the process. So that's an option. You could do a smaller deficit. Same thing with 2,000 calories. 2,000 calories should feel fairly manageable um, to take away from what you're currently eating. Um, you're gonna see maybe a little bit faster rate of weight loss, um, but again, it's probably gonna be manageable. You're probably gonna be able to adhere to it, not only on weekdays, but on weekends as well. Another option would be to go into 1800 calories. So now we're creating quite a significant um, drop. So from 2400 to 1800 is going to be 600 calories. So most likely you're going to feel that a bit more. You might see faster weight loss, but what you're also going to find is that you're probably going to be more hungry on 1800 calories if 2400 calories is where you would maintain. So most likely you're going to have to start to incorporate more high volume foods. So maybe some of your carbohydrates are going to have to be more vegetables and things like that that are high volume. Still have good carbohydrates though, still eat rice and all that good stuff. I'm not saying carbohydrates are bad, but what you might want to consider is if you are feeling hungry, making sure that you have more high volume foods. Um, now, the thing is, is, as we're starting to get into a bigger deficit, what your body wants to do is it wants to come back to homeostasis. So it constantly, the only job 
your body has is to survive and procreate. That's it. It doesn't care if you have a six pack. It doesn't care if you can back squat 300 pounds. It doesn't really care. Its job is to survive. And so what's going to happen is when you start getting into a bigger deficit, it's going to start to like kind of downregulate things a little bit. And so you might have heard of this before called metabolic adaptation. Um, and so what's happening in your body is your body is just starting to downregulate things a little bit. So this is where you might see blinking rate is going to decline, the amount of energy uh, expenditure in the things like things like doing the dishes seems like more work or suddenly you see yourself taking the escalator instead of the stairs. And so your body just will naturally downregulate things. And so part of what it comes what happens is it starts to downregulate uh, your metabolism, your hormones, and things like that. So this is normal. It's not anything to be scared of, but something to consider is as you go into a bigger deficit, your body is going to rebel against that a bit more. And so that's when, you know, you feel like you can't control kind of what you want to eat because your body's job is just to remain in homeostasis. So this is the times where you might want to incorporate more kind of dietary breaks in order to upregulate hormone production and things like that, as well as just psychologically, it's going to feel a bit better to have some higher calorie days, not only physiological, what's happening in your body, but also psychologically. So same thing as we go lower and lower. So let's say we go to 20, um, sorry, 1600 calories, same thing. All of a sudden, you don't have the motivation to get to the gym as much. Your workouts are suffering. You don't feel like you're recovering as well all of those things are going to start to happen. And so that's just your body down regulating based on what you are giving to it for fuel. So again, you could diet on 1600 calories, but what might start to happen at 1600 calories is your body is going to down regulate more. So if you stay there for a long period of time, you're going to plateau. And when you plateau, you're going to have to go even lower if you haven't incorporated some of those dietary breaks. So some of those dietary breaks could be having back-to-back -back refeed days where you have, you know, either like close to maintenance calories or you have a higher, two higher calorie days. Now, I'm not a big fan of the term cheat days or cheat meals or anything like that um, because it puts like this connotation of treating your body like an asshole and that you're cheating on a diet or something like that. You still want to treat your body really well, but what you're doing is you're just giving it some more food so that it's not saying, oh dear, I need to hang on to everything I have, including, you know, holding on to fat storage, downregulating metabolism, downregulating hormone production, things like that. So same thing with 1400 calories. Most likely, could you eat 400, 1400 calories? Absolutely. But most likely at some point, adherence is going to start to be crap. You're going to start to skip workouts. You're not going to even feel like going for walks anymore. Most likely your relationships are going to start to suffer at some point. You're going to become, you know, potentially socially isolated and things like that. So although you could diet at 1400 calories, if your long-term goal is sustainability and good hormone production and things like that, I probably wouldn't recommend that drastic of a drop in calories if you're not incorporating some sort of dietary breaks in order to make sure that metabolic adaptation doesn't happen as readily. So even though today wasn't really what you might have thought I was going to talk about with how much should I eat, I wanted to give you guys a bit of background on talking about where maybe you should take your calories in order to get into a fat loss phase and to do it safely, sustainably, and something that is going to protect your health long term. So hopefully you found this useful. Let me know if you have more ideas for other topics or if you have more questions about this topic. Uh, feel free to reach out and ask questions and I'll see you next time. <music>